today, the historic city for the Basque people. It's almost closing, but there's still quite a few people here buying things. This market is so important that Monday is practically a holiday here because so many people come from the surrounding areas to shop. This market has existed for at least 650 years. Can you believe it? There's written proof that Guernica has had a market since 1366 and it was market day when the city of Guernica was bombed on April 26, 1937. The day for the bombing was likely chosen because so many people would be in town. Okay, so here we are in front of the Museum of Peace, El Museo de la Paz in Guernica, and we just came out it's uh, a pretty impactful museum. It's not super big, but uh, some of the best things are some of the testimonials by people who survived the bombing, and you definitely want to hear those. The, there's good videos on the third floor that include those testimonials. When we went, there was an outdoor photo exhibit of the bombing, Javier Irujo, an expert on the topic, and the director of the Center of Bass Studies in Reno, Nevada, wrote the text for the exhibit. It's public knowledge that Guernica was bombed by German and Italian planes at the behest of Spanish dictator Francisco Franco. At the museum, you'll learn that the Germans eventually apologized to the people of Guernica for the role they played in the bombing, but the Spanish government has never offered an apology. Look at all that rubble. We're here on in towards the end of August. It's still summertime, but it's raining. And it's been raining since yesterday on and off. That's the Basque country for you, lots of rain. But that's also why it's so green, and that's also why it's so beautiful. <laughs> So next we wanted to visit the tree of Guernica. I figured it would be easy to find. After all, the tree is known around the world by most Basques, so it had to be located in an obvious place. I didn't even bother looking at Google Maps. I saw one sign and headed in that direction. But no. First we ran across the Euskaleria Museum, which I would have loved to see. But we didn't do enough planning. It was closed when we went there. Most of the year it's closed on Mondays, but in July and August it's open. But closes at 3 p.m. So remember, get to Guernica early if you want to go on market day and see the two museums. Apparently, you can see both with a combined ticket. We continued past the museum hoping to find the tree. We followed a number of people walking ahead of us thinking they knew where they were going. We were lost. We found out later we were in the park of the towns of Europe. It was quite beautiful, but no tree of Guernica in sight. I mean, this looks like something important. I think we're in the right place, but I'm not sure. There's a door where we're supposed to go out that way. 
On this path, we saw a bust of von Humboldt, friend of the Basques. He was the one to discover that Basque, or Euskera, was the only non-Indo-European language in Western Europe. So I have to admit that I didn't do my research when it came to figuring out where everything was in this town. The tree of Guernica definitely don't take the route we took. Look here, we finally found it, but we can't get in. We came the back way. So we had to retrace our steps back to the Euskaleria Museum. There, you take a left. Okay, so here it is. It's not always open. As early as the 1400s, local representatives met under the tree of Guernica, which has become a symbol of freedom of the Basque people. They gathered and created their own laws, an early form of democracy that was admired by the philosopher Jean-Jacques Rousseau and U.S. President John Adams. So we had a bit of luck when we reached the assembly house, where the representatives meet on a regular basis. It's open for tours, but the guy in charge told the group behind us that there were no more tickets left. He looked down at me and spotted my Lao Buru and asked me, in Spanish, So you're Basque? Yes, definitely, I told him. He signaled to my husband and I to come in. The assembly house is amazing, and all the decor, especially the stained glass ceiling, contains so much symbolism about the Basque culture and people that the only way for you to do it justice is to visit it. So here it is, apparently it's the current, the current version is only seven years old. Next, we were off to the mural of the Guernica painting by Picasso. We passed by the Church of the Assumption of Mary. This Gothic and Renaissance church from the 15th century is the oldest building in Guernica. There are some who say that the bombing of Guernica would have been forgotten if Picasso had not created his painting about it. I doubt this is true because the Basques have a long memory. The painting of the bombing of Guernica is probably Picasso's most famous work. He painted it right after the bombing in 1937 as an immediate reaction to the devastating attack ordered by Franco. For many years, Picasso refused to have it be exhibited in Spain until democratic liberties were re-established. In 1981, it finally came back to Spain. We decided to take a break for lunch and had a delicious three-course meal at the Azules Grill on Pablo Picasso Calea. Javier Aldecosea Uribarrena has what may possibly be the largest collection of Basque souvenirs and culture-related items for sale. He opened his first store in Guernica in 1993 and in 1999 moved it to his current location on Andra Maria Calea. He was a bit hoarse that day and preferred not to talk, but encouraged us to come in and look at all the many items that he has for sale. We decided to say goodbye to Guernica with a final visit to the statue of José Antonio Aguirre. He was the first Lendacari of Euskaleria, elected during the days that it existed as, as an actual republic from 1936 until he died in 1960. He's always reminded me a bit of my dad. What do you think?